So I'm Karen, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Visory. And what we essentially do is take your existing camera infrastructure and turn the cameras into sensors using AI sight or uh, computer vision and uh, machine learning. Um, LDB Capital has predicted that there will be an excess of 44 billion cameras by the end of 2022. And we can see that that number uh, is probably an underestimation um, with the recent pandemic and the proliferation of cameras has actually been accelerated thanks to that. Um, and nobody will be ever able to look at all of these data streams that are coming in unless they use cognitive AI. And that's what Visory is doing because yes, um, sadly, most of these camera streams um, are still aggregating a vast amount of dumb data and that's not uti utilized to its full potential. Um, so we are essentially uh, built for anybody and everybody who needs to understand what's happening in their physical space um, and who are camera operators or own or have access to a camera park. So these are essentially um, business parks, uh, parking operators, retail centers, local government authorities, cities and so forth. Um, and we offer our AI um, tool as, as a SaaS service. So we want to remove all the barriers from this type of solution on scaling. So everything is self onboardable, um, self set up and a very simple business model for a monthly fixed fee as well. Uh, we are working with three types of clients. Um, so a campus or a business park, a city or a local entity, and then uh, looking at the B2C model as well, which will be put into test later um, into, in 2021. Um, so what have we been engaged in? So to date, Visory is only 11 months old. So we're a relatively young startup, I guess, uh, like Sentinel is as well. And we started in November 2019. Um, and since then, we have piloted in Dubai and worked with the, retail, with the local uh, road and transport authority there, delivering a real time um, traffic analytics. And once global pandemic came and we relocated back to Estonia in March, we started looking and working with uh, local B2B customers. And we've been piloting ever since. So we essentially have four pilots um, on the go at the moment. One of them is international. And the first pilots are now uh, converting into paying customers um, as well. Um, how do we help or, or what, what are the kind of softer um, uh, goals perhaps that then translate back to harder data and how do we help achieve United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Um, I guess it's quite simple in, in, um, from where I'm standing because all the data is made visible through computer vision and through the camera feeds that, that, that we're looking at. So the image you can see here on, on, on the screen is from our very first client, uh, which is a business park in Estonia, and that has utilized our tech to automate um, their um, parking visibility. They are also using the data we provide to build a better environment and to use the data for future real estate developments. We're also a responsible consumer and they're trying to get the, the resource consumption of real video uh, down. The team is uh, myself, my co-founder Davi has built multiple AI teams internationally before. And um, our dream is to become the preferred video analytics platform in the world. Uh, deliver better bottom line, um, revenue increases, and help create a better urban environment for everybody. Thank you. I think my time is now up. Thank you very much. That was perfectly on time by the second. So um, let me ask our judges if any of them have some questions for you. Barak is here, so maybe you can start with Stephen Baraki followed by Andrew yeah, I'm curious to see what's your sort of competitive landscape. I mean, um, I've been looking at similar technology for quite a few years. So uh, how do you see the major competitive forces out there and how are you going to differentiate from them? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, thank you for the question. Yeah, we get asked that a lot. Um, there are, um, so we have classified our competitors into quite a few groups. Um, some work only within um, traffic analytics, uh, but the key kind of um, 
I guess the common theme running through them is that most of them are hardware companies. So still a lot of these uh, video analytics providers sell you their own sensor or some sort of an IoT device or a camera. And that's something that we specifically do not do. So we use whatever existing camera screen the client has. Um, they do not have to do any massive capital expenditure. We just need a URL link um, and they can even self on board. So that, that's the, the key differentiator. Secondly, we are very much privacy, uh, security, safety first. We went through a full legal GDPR audit in August. Um, so we're putting uh, our money where our mouth is to make sure we're very much uh, aligned with the privacy um, uh, stuff. So that's the, the key, I guess, the key differentiators. And we don't just do counts and classification. That's quite simple. We are doing intent and behavior prediction to understand what is going to happen in the future and then deliver safety um, stats, uh, better planning decisions to be enabled through that and so forth. Okay, thank you. Thanks very much, Jan, please. Uh, I guess I already have answered part of the, my question. And my question was about uh, uh, kind of tension uh, and uneasiness about surveillance that there is kind of spreading quickly, at least in the Western world. Uh, and also in China, I, I, uh, from, what yeah. I, from what I know. Uh, you mentioned GDPR, but perhaps you kind of kind of give an example of um, of a problem that you already have had to face when it comes to kind of uh, making sure that just you stay on the correct side of privacy. Mm -hmm. So, uh, one of our very first um, clients that we worked with before Dubai was actually telling City Council, and we couldn't even look at car number plates essentially because it's just not uh, the legal framework doesn't allow for it. So we downsample all the video that comes in. Uh, we don't look at people's faces. We don't look at camera number plates. And then we start doing the detections after that. So we haven't even made it possible for us um, to see those faces. And especially the public sector and both, well, both of our the sets of clients are very rigorous in following up. So all the, before every pilot, we have a pretty rigorous check with the B2B clients legal departments to make sure that uh, what we say is actually how we do it. All right, thanks. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, I think we're, uh, we're good. Um, well. Ahmed, uh, may I it briefly? Yes, please, Mike, go ahead. Um, Kangaroo, I enjoyed the presentation and I should declare I have some history in traffic systems. And it's not an industry that changes very quickly, as you may already have, have observed. But is your business model based on SaaS enough? It seems to me you've got a lot of knowledge there. And is there not another revenue stream associated with design or advisory or consultancy? Are you underplaying your strengths? Yes. Uh, thank you, Mike, for the question. So we have seen... Um, especially recently in the, in the retail um, space where we're piloting that uh, uh, some of the data that the, these particular clients have gathered before um, is now taking on a whole new meaning. So give dwell time, for example. If you just use the Wi-Fi network, it doesn't really give you that much. But if you can see who those people are who are spending a lot of time there, you can then make a, a, a very different kind of, um, different set of decisions uh, based on that. Um, so we have decided that up to 20% of the revenue can come from consulting. And it's one of those revenue streams that we could unlock uh, absolutely. And we're looking into that as well. So building that particular capability into the company that would uh, advise clients on how to use the analytics we are giving back to them. Thanks very much. It opens up access to other data sets, which you could look at as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of the reasons we were very keen on this B2C uh, test as well is uh, to get uh, more data for trainings. Like you said in the very beginning, data sets are the, are the key. Thank you. 